Hey everybody, we're going to get started now with the webinar. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome to the third webinar that's part of our six-part 2017 Pinterest for Partners webinar series. Um, we're excited to have you guys here today. For those of you who haven't joined, especially um, any of the previous webinars, just want to introduce myself. I'm Adrian, and I'm on the Pinterest education team. Um, and we've created this webinar series in response to feedback from partners just like you guys. So I want to give you a quick background before we get into things in case you haven't been a part of any of the other webinars. So starting last week, we kicked off the program capturing six webinars that are spanning a variety of topics that we're hoping that you're going to find helpful as you're planning and buying Pinterest campaigns for your clients. So for anyone who attends or registers, you're going to receive a recap email within several days of this webinar. Um, and there's going to be a recording as well as any other materials that are covered. So have no fear if you're not able to attend these webinars live or missed any last week. You can still get the recording and materials in two ways. One being if you registered, you will get that recap email that has the recording and deck. Um, or if you are a part of the Pinterest newsletters from the agency team or the PMP team, um, you should get the materials also in one of the Pinterest newsletters. If you're not sure if you're on that, you can always reach out to your Pinterest account manager or partner manager that you work with. Um, again, these webinars are meant to be short and digestible, and the goal really is that you, know, you guys will have the follow-up materials after this, so that way you can go back and watch them if you're ever um, needing a refresher or you need to reference something, so you will have all of this afterwards. And then before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. So, our presenter, when our presenters are done walking through this content, we're going to open it up to Q&A. Some of you probably have used GoToWebinar before, but if not, just note that there is a um, questions, or there's a widget that appears on the side of your, of your webcast, and there's a little widget in there, and within it, you can see a question section. You can just type in your question there, and then at the end, I'll be moderating that and go through the questions and have the presenters respond to those as many as we can, and anything that we don't get to, we'll do our best to follow up on. Um, and additionally, there's a super short survey, um, help us help you, right? These surveys really are meant to give us feedback so that way we know if there's an appetite for these type of webinars as well as um, give us any information to make these better and make them as valuable as possible for you and your teams. So with that, we're going to get started. Um, for this session, we're going to be going through ad formats and creative for direct response-based objectives. Um, we have Nikki Bazzani back on the line from the Pin Factory as well as another um, speaker, Lydia Simmons, who will be on um, later in the presentation, and she's on the sales team and will help walk through um, some different best practices as well as be here to answer any questions. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nikki. Oops. Oops, one second, Nikki. Sorry, I had you on mute, but you are good now. All right. Thanks, Adrian. Hi guys, I'm Nikki and I lead up the Pin Factory and today we're going to talk about um, ad formats and creative best practices for your direct response needs. Here's a little video first of one of the formats that we'll be going over today. So today we're going to go over um, some formats that include app install to help drive people to the app store to download your app. We're also going to review some best practices and guidelines for one tap promoted pins. And then just share some overall creative best practices to help um, your client. So each day, every day, millions of people come to Pinterest looking for new ideas and products to try and buy. In fact, almost 9 out of 10 people say that um, Pinterest helps them find new ideas and that Pinterest helps introduce them to new brands and new services. The best ideas really come from businesses and without businesses, Pinterest just wouldn't look or feel the same. Ideas that uh, come from businesses are actionable, they're credible, they're relevant, they're what people want and they're really essential to Pinterest. So if you give a penner a great idea, they'll want to try it. If you listen to some other webinars by now, you've probably heard that pens are ideas, and that's because they really are. Whether you're looking how to retile your bathroom or you need to learn how to pack efficiently for a trip abroad, um, Pinterest is filled with billions of ideas.
So now let's get into three formats that we're going to highlight today. Standard pins, so bringing your existing content onto Pinterest. App install, which you see in the second example here. And the way you can identify an app install pin is through that little bar at the bottom of the image that says install. And one tap, um, which helps people take action on, on the pins. Another indicator of a uh, one tap pin is the little button in the left hand corner with the little arrow. So standard pins really help drive brand metrics in both home feed and search. A feed offering um, is to reach people in kind of the discovery and browse mode using um, data and targeting. And then the search offering helps people um, reach people through keyword-based buying and targeting. So what is a promoted app pin? Um, promoted app pins enable pinners to discover and download um, your app directly from a promoted pin. To go over some creative best practices for app install, I'll show you first how it works. So you can see on the far left the app install by, again, you see the little gray bar at the bottom of the photo that says install. When you click on that, then um, you're directed to the App Store. Again, you can see the Install um, button on the far right in the bottom corner. So because App Install is new, we're constantly trying to test and learn to figure out what creative works best. I suggest to your client you text them, uh, test a mixture of lifestyle and kind of app-focused imagery. This imagery can come from the images that you can find in the App Store. Um, test lifestyle by showing the app in action by having like kind of an overhead shot of the person using the app. Um, highlighting the benefit is also really important. So what is the value? Why is it important to the pinner to download it? For fashion and shopping categories, we sh um, found that showing multiple items is really important, and it helps drive clicks, and also appealing to nostalgia. There's one um, brand that I worked on that has a Wizard of Oz theme, so we tapped into what Wizard of Oz um, means for people who are growing up maybe watching the movie. So appealing to nostalgia is also really important. We've also found some things to not try, which is the flashy imagery, especially in gaming, um, repurposing banner ads, also um, in gaming. Don't include the App Store badge when it's seen within maybe a screenshot of the phone. Um, the repetitiveness just isn't a great creative tactic. Don't use the partner logo unless there's some really strong brand recognition. The logo of the brand will also be seen um, where it says promoted by, um, so you will see the logo there. Don't cre create really long pins or giraffe pins with multiple stacked images or complicated steps. Kind of keep it as simple as possible. So hi everybody, <clears throat> I'm Lydia from the sales team and I'm going to talk briefly about one tap pins. So this is one of our newer formats as well and as Nikki mentioned it's really created to make it easier for pinners to take an action by creating a landing page experience that's very in line with people's expectations based on your pin. So to go into some creative best practices I think for context it's helpful to just talk about something that if we use Pinterest we've probably all experienced before which is clicking through a pin to a very disappointing landing page. So in this image example, you're looking at a shoe that you might want to buy. You click through and you land on a page and the shoe is nowhere to be found. It's a really disappointing experience, um, not just for the user, but you know, for your brand as well. It can really damage your brand perception and also your business results. On the flip side, we've probably all had a, a really great experience where in this example you see a baby outfit that you love, you click through, 
you land on the page on Etsy where there's that outfit and you can buy it right then and there. Um, this is what Pinterest really should be, and in one tap, this is one of the requirements that we have. Um, so I'm going to talk through some of these requirements for one tap pins, and there are five categories that they center around. Relevance, mobile optimization, hard walls, interstitials, and pricing. We'll go through each of these, and then at the end, you'll have kind of a checklist so that when you are working with your clients, you can have this at your side to make sure that all of your pins will be approved for one tap. So starting off with relevance, what this means is, again, in this example I just used, making sure that your landing page contains elements from the pin so that it's a really seamless user experience. That can include imagery, language, or the primary subject matter. Uh, secondly, elements must be in the pin before it's truncated in the feed. So if you have a very long pin and it gets truncated, you need to make sure that what you want, what's going to be on the landing page is before that truncation. Same thing on the landing page, it has to be above the fold on a mobile device. And lastly, the product must be available and in stock if you're driving to a product page. So getting into some examples here, um, starting off with relevance, um, specifically imagery. We're showing two pins here, one that's rejected, one that's approved, and the landing page on the right. So you'll see that the rejected pin was rejected because it features makeup items none of which are in the landing page, the mobile landing page that you see on the right, above the fold. However, that approved pin shows a model shot, and the same model shot is found on the landing page above the fold. So it's a seamless user experience. This middle pin would get approved, the left pin on the left would get rejected. The second example is um, language relevance. So on the left, you'll see a rejected pin. Uh, it shows a specific recipe that you then don't see on the landing page on the right. On the flip side, in the middle, you'll see an approved pin. Uh, it shows you Scary Good Recipes, and then when you click through in one tap to the landing page, you see Scary Good Recipes right there on the landing page. So that language is on both the pin and the landing page, which allows it to be approved. Third example here is subject matter relevance. Um, so again, you see a landing page with um, lipstick category, and the rejected pin shows uh, brow makeup, and it drives to this lips category page. Because there's no relevance between the pin and the landing page, that would get rejected. Versus the middle pin, it's showing you lipstick, and it drives to this lip category page. That's a relevant uh, pinner experience, and so it would get approved. And then this last one here, so pin elements need to be uh, before the truncation. So here's an example on the left of a truncated pin in the feed. Uh, it shows you expand. That means that the pin continues to go on. Um, and the, uh, it's, the pin is truncated before the registry is called out. And then the landing page is a registry sign-up page. So this would get rejected versus the pin in the middle where it's calling out uh, the registry on the landing page and it sends you to a registry so this would get approved. So again the the theme here is just making sure that there's relevance between the pin that you're promoting and the landing page um, through a couple different things such as subject matter, imagery, language, and, and showing up before truncation. The second theme for creative best practices and getting your pins approved for one tap is mobile optimization. So there's two, theme, two kind of buckets underneath this theme, the first being speed. Um, really, we want to make sure that when the pinner clicks through, they, they tap and they land on the landing page, the page load time needs to be faster than eight seconds. We found that beyond eight seconds, people will drop off, and again, it's a poor user experience. So eight seconds is the uh, threshold there. You can use the Google Page Speed Analyzer to check your client's pages. You must receive a score of 30 plus using that tool. The second piece is just being mobile optimized. Um, the landing page must provide a compelling mobile experience. If you find that it's not mobile optimized, again, that can be a really poor pinner experience. So that pin would be likely to be disproved. Third theme here is hard walls. So this is an example where you, know, you see a pin and you tap on it and it sends you to a page where you're forced to sign up before you can do anything on the page. Um, in this experience, 
Uh, this is allowed, but you must make it very clear in the image and or the first line of copy in the description that a sign-up is required upon landing page. Next theme here is interstitials or pop-ups. So uh, there's a couple different rules here. And again, this is all in the spirit of making a positive user experience. So any pop-up that appears on the landing page within zero seconds, so it immediately appears, is essentially treated as a hard wall. So like the last example we talked about, it must be clear in either or the, the image or the description that there is a pop-up upon the landing page. Um, the second thing here is that the pop-ups must that appear after 15 seconds, so you land on the page, 15 seconds go by, and then you're sending, your client is sending the user a message, that's fine. Anything between that zero and 15 second mark is not allowed. The last thing here is you can do an inline scroll, um, but they have to be less than 30% of the page when you get to the landing page. So if I get to the landing page, I start scrolling, um, but it's, it's already the pop-up is already taking up 50% of the page, let's say, that would not be allowed. And the last thing here is pricing. <clears throat> so again, in the spirit of keeping uh, pinners happy, the price on the landing page has to be equal to or less than the price in the pin. Um, you can imagine if you see that baby outfit that we really liked and it tells you on the pin that it's $20, you land on the landing page and it's actually $50, that's a pretty disappointing experience and that's what we're trying to avoid. Similarly, if you're doing something, let's say we're in the holidays and you say, here's a gift guide of gifts starting from $10, at least one of the items on the landing page needs to be $10. Again, if I, if I were to see that and I get to the landing page and all of the gifts are $25 or above, for example, um, that's pretty disappointing for me, so I might be less likely to visit that brand in the future. So here's one example of that. Um, you'll see that in this uh, pin on the right, we are promoting a 50% off your first bundle, and there's two different landing pages. The one on the left, um, it's going from $4.95 to $3.95. That is less than a 50% discount, so that would get rejected, as that's a misleading experience. But the pin in the middle, you um, the, the item is discounted from $3.95 down to $129.95. That is above 50%. So 50% or more, that would get approved. So I know that's a lot of information. So as I mentioned, this is an ad policy checklist for OneTap. Um, so you can have this on hand. We will send out the deck after this webinar. Um, it's just a helpful checklist to go through to make sure. And again, the spirit of all of this is one tap pins take you directly from the pin to the landing page without that close-up experience. Um, so we need to make sure that the user experience is seamless from what they see in the pin to what they see on the landing page. And these are the five categories that you have to get approved for uh, to make sure that that user experience is, is a positive one. I'm going to hand it back to Nikki. Thanks, Lydia. So some of you might be launching your first set of direct response promoted pins, or some of you might need a refresher. So let's get into some tactics on creative best practices. Like I said, pins are ideas, and when people are ready to plan for a project or event or purchase, they often go to Pinterest. And as a brand, this really allows you to be at the point of entry um, for your next customer to really find your brand, interact with your brand, and eventually purchase your products. The core experience is pretty simple. People go and they browse for ideas for their everyday lives. They save the ones that interest them for later, and then they take a closer look at the pins they want to take action on. Now there's three kind of guidelines that we have here. Pins should be helpful. People are coming to Pinterest to discover new ideas to improve their lives. So by offering them helpful tips, advice, instructions, lists, um, being helpful is really great. The next one is beautiful. So because Pinterest is such a visual platform and because so many pins come from businesses, ensure your pins are professionally shot in order to fit within the aesthetic of the platform. 
The last one is that pens should be actionable. People find these ideas and then they want to do them in their real lives. So make it easy for someone to take action on your brand idea. I like to talk through the lens of like the penner journey. And how it starts out is often someone will come to Pinterest in a just looking mindset. They don't necessarily know what they're looking for, but they're open to being inspired. Other times people arrive in this maybe I could mindset, which means they have an idea of what they're looking for, but they're in a consideration mindset that leaves them open for your brand to fit right in. And of course there are penners who arrive knowing clearly what they want and go and they search for it. So it allows your brand to reach them at the highest point of consideration. In addition to those three main principles, we've developed a set of creative best practices to really help drive those online objectives with your creative. I'm going to go into each one of them in a little bit more depth. The first one being compelling images. Showing multiple colors or styles, um, say for instance like this handbag, help people who may not like one particular style see that it's, there's a variety behind the pen, that when they go to the landing page or website, they have more options that are available. This also leads people to explore your site for a little bit longer. The next one is text overlays. So text overlays really help a person in the just looking mindset jump to the maybe I could by using a helpful text overlay. Oftentimes we see a text overlay that says how to, to really urge the pinner to um, click on the pen and find out how they can create a recipe or how they can sign up for BarkBox. The next one is calls to action. So this is exactly what a pinner needs to move from uh, the just looking to kind of narrowing down the dis um, decision. You can have stronger calls to action like buy now and today sale in the description, but softer calls to action like explore or take our beauty profile quiz can be included in text overlay. Vertical aspect ratio is also really important because 80% of pinners are exploring Pinterest on their mobile. Um, it's really important to take up as much real estate as possible. So having a 2 by 3 or a 1 to 2 by 8 pixel ratio helps take up a little bit more real estate. Lydia also mentioned um, pins being truncated in feed. And the truncation happens when you have a 600 pixel wide image and a 15 by 60 pixels tall. So make sure that your pens stay within that aspect ratio. Lydia also mentioned that sign up is often a requirement for one tap pins to include in the first um, couple lines of the description. So as we see here on Stitch Fix, um, you can see it there, it says sign up for Stitch Fix um, within the second line. Detailed descriptions are also a great place where you can provide price points, special deals, offers like free shipping. Try to put your most compelling um, aspects of the pen within the description. You have up to 500 characters to use and the sweet spot really lies within 200 to 400 characters. And lastly, tasteful branding. Your brand means something, but it might not be recognizable to everyone on the platform. So enforce branding by including a logo watermark, like Me Undies does here, or simply by adding product placement. Dryers, a pretty well-known ice cream brand, has never included a logo watermark. They've only ever done product placement within their pens. So you can show the packaging or tasteful logo. I wanted to show off a couple of examples on ways to inspire action through the content itself. 
So taking a very lifestyle, kind of editorial approach like Nordstrom does here on the far left, and then mixing in a little bit of um, lifestyle as well as products like Darby Smart does. Fair Minerals does a really great job of laying out all the products and then having the full look at the top of this pen. Um, it doesn't show here, but the description also goes into detail on how to use each product. And the last example from me, Undies, this is um, a pen where they show just product. They reinforce the branding too here with um, the logo watermark. And there's different ways you can develop your content, whether it's repurposed from either website, email marketing, maybe some other social channels. So Carter's did a really great job of using their existing assets, um, the ones that you can find just directly on the website, and kind of collaging them and stacking them together. You can also go to image websites to buy some images, like from Getty or Shutterstock and repurpose images that way. You can hold a photo shoot in-house, and this doesn't really have to be high production. Um, it can be shooting just on a countertop like Dryers did here. So to go over some key takeaways, like I've said before, Pinterest is filled with ideas, and people on Pinterest are really open to finding new ideas from your brand. Promoted pins should be beautiful, helpful, and actionable. One tap really improves the pinner experience when executed properly. And app install pins enable pinners to discover and download apps directly from a promoted pin. Thanks so much for your time, guys. We're now open for Q&A. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Nikki and Lydia. I think that was some awesome tactics, um, you know, some really great detail around one tap, especially, and then just going into those best practices. And just for everyone on the line, um, when we did a webinar last week covering for um, ad formats and creative best practices for branding objectives, we sent out a repurposing, how to talk to your clients about repurposing their um, their content to make great pins on Pinterest. So we'll share that again just to make sure everyone has it, as well as um, send out just the ad format spec sheet that we have so everyone has that as well. Even if you did or did not register for last week's webinar, you'll get it um, after this one also. So I'm going to jump over to questions. Um, do we have any benchmarks that we're able to share for CPC? Um, Lydia, you might be able to answer this one. Yeah, <clears throat> so I would just say, you know, we try to avoid talking about benchmarks primarily because our CPC ads run in an auction. Um, that said, what I can share very anecdotally is the things that matter in terms of getting volume for direct response campaigns in our CPC auction are your bid and your click-through rate. So on an ordinary campaign, I would just say try your best to aim for a click-through rate that is 0.25 or above. Um, you may find that you're coming in much higher than that, and that's great. That will allow you to be able to get more volume at a lower bid. Um, or if you're coming in much lower than that, it can be really hard to get a lot of volume without bidding astronomically high, right? So for a direct response client of yours, they're not going to potentially want to bid incredibly high. So aim for a higher click-through rate. By doing so, or in doing so, you probably want to make um, or apply all of these creative best practices that Nikki and I have been talking about and make sure that your targeting aligns to the pin at hand. Great, that's, that's awesome. Thanks for answering that. Um, in terms of app install promoted pins, um, when someone clicks through on that, are they directed to the App Store in the native Pinterest app or are they taken to the Apple App Store? Got it, good question. So they are taken to the App Store. Uh, for example, the, the Apple App Store. So you'll click on the pin and it will send you out to the App Store itself. Perfect. Um, great. And then in terms of just one tap pins, are those available now through the API? They are, correct? They are available through the API, yes. Great. So I understand that question to mean you're working with a PMP partner um, and can you run one tap pins? The answer is yes. Perfect. 
Um, Nikki, maybe you could take this one. If you can explain truncated a little more. Um, is this when the image is too large to fit on the screen? Yeah, so you'll often see on mobile as you're scrolling through um, a pin pop up with a little gray bar at the bottom of the image that says expand pin. Um, that means that the pin image is really tall. Um, so what Pinterest does automatically is it shortens it and then when the pinner clicks to close up so the pin is in full screen view they can scroll down to the bottom. Now um, the 600 by 1560 aspect ratio is the tallest you can go. Um, I usually do a 2 by 3 aspect ratio which is 600 pixels wide by 900 pixels tall just to be sure um, that it's not going to truncate within the feed. That makes sense. Um, another app install question. Um, are these ads, promoted pins, only available for iOS or is it available on Android as well? Lydia, do you know that one? Yes, I do. So it is currently in beta for iOS. We are alpha testing Android, uh, but that is not available for beta just yet. It will be. We will certainly get to a point where um, we'll have general availability for both uh, Android and iOS. But today it's from primarily iOS. Awesome, thank you. Um, the last question that I see right now, anyways, um, is around video ads, um, if we have video ad recommendations. Um, so video ads are typically something we recommend for clients that are, are looking for brand-based objectives. So we covered that a little bit deeper in last week's webinar um, around brand-based objectives. So the best practices would be there, and we can certainly make sure that um, you have that recording as well as the materials. Um, I don't know, Nikki, if you want to elaborate more, there's a second part to this, um, but do video ads run better than still images typically? Um, and if we have any like recommendations or best practices around the different ad types and which are best used for what types of objectives, maybe both of you want to answer that for one of you. Yeah, I would just say, um, in my experience, it really does depend on your client's objectives. So video today, the way it is purchased on Pinterest is a reservation buy, and so it is primarily a brand awareness play. If your partner is trying to drive brand awareness, video is a great format, and it is one of our newer products, so it's definitely eye-catching. Um, it allows it to pop a bit more, and in that it's a reservation buy, you can get some really um, high placements in the feed. If your partner is trying to drive, or your client is trying to drive direct response, such as sales, signups, leads, whatever that you know really performance metric might be, I would say video today is probably not the best format in which to reach those or through which to reach those goals. I would stick to some of these formats we've talked about today, such as standard CPC pins, one tap CPC pins, app install pins. Um, really, just think of it as objective-based formats. Perfect. I think that answers it. So, I mean, really, there's no saying one is better than the other. It's more just depending on what the objective is. Awesome. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through right now. So, we might be wrapping things up a little bit early here. Um, so, we'll give you guys a little bit of time back. And like I mentioned, um, we will definitely be sending out the recording as well as the materials and some extra um, kind of one-sheeters and, and spec stocks and a repurposing um, content for your client stock. So be on the lookout for that in the next couple of days. And we appreciate you guys all joining. We'd love to hear your back, feedback through the survey. Um, and thank you guys, and we'll, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.